This is an example video for matching graphs with polynomial functions. In these problems, we're given two polynomial functions and asked to match them with the correct two out of six graphs. We'll do this by identifying the end behavior and zeros of the function. The end behavior of a function depends on the degree of the polynomial and the leading coefficient. If the degree of the polynomial is even, both ends of the graph will point in the same direction. They will point upwards if the leading coefficient is positive, and they will point downwards if the leading coefficient is negative. If the degree of the polynomial is odd, the ends of the graph will point in opposite directions. If the leading coefficient is positive, the left end will point down and the right end will point up. If the leading coefficient is negative, the left end will point up and the right end will point down. These characteristics, the degree of the polynomial and the sign of the leading coefficient, tell us the general shape of the curve, but different things could be happening in between the ends. Another important feature to take into account is the graph's behavior near the zeros of the polynomial function. If a zero has odd multiplicity, then the graph crosses the x-axis at the zero. If a zero has even multiplicity, then the graph touches the x-axis at the zero. To get a better understanding of what all of these things mean, let's try an example problem. Say we're given two functions, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 3x cubed, and g of x equals the quantity x plus 1 squared times the quantity x minus 3. We need to choose the graph of each function from the choices given. We'll start with the first function, f of x equals x to the fourth minus 3x cubed. We notice that the leading term is x to the fourth because this is the term with the highest degree. So f has a degree 4, which is even, and a leading coefficient 1, which is positive. Therefore, the graph of f will have ends that point in the same direction and upwards. So let's eliminate any graphs with ends that point in opposite directions or that point in the same directions but downward. Looking at our choices, we can eliminate graphs b, c, e, and f. Next, to determine if our function corresponds to graph a or graph d, we'll find the zeros of f of x by factoring. The two terms in our function have a common factor of x cubed, so we'll pull an x cubed out of each term. Next, we set each factor equal to zero. This leaves us with x equals zero, which has a multiplicity of three, and x equals three, which has a multiplicity of 1. Since the multiplicities of both of these zeros are odd, the graph will cross the x-axis at both 0 and 3. Graph A crosses the x-axis at 0 and at 3, while graph D only touches the x-axis at 0 and at 3, indicating that graph A is the graph that matches the function f of x. Now let's move on to g of x. g of x equals the quantity x plus 1 squared times the quantity x minus 3. First, we want to find the leading term of g of x. We can do this by multiplying the highest degree term from each factor to get the highest degree, or leading, term of the overall function. Because this quantity x plus 1 is squared, that tells us we really have two factors that are x plus 1. In each of the three factors in g of x, the highest degree term is x. So we'll multiply x times x times x, which equals x cubed. This tells us the leading term of g of x is x cubed. So g has degree 3, which is odd, and leading coefficient 1, which is positive. Remembering our end behavior rules from earlier, 
This means the graph of G falls to the left and rises to the right. Now that we know this, we can eliminate all the graphs that fall to the right and rise to the left, as well as any graphs where the ends point in the same directions. When we do this, we're left with graph B and graph E as possible answers. Next, we want to look at the zeros of our functions. If we set each factor in our function equal to zero, we get that x equals negative one with a multiplicity of two and x equals three with a multiplicity of one. The multiplicity of the zero x equals negative one is two, which is even. This tells us that the graph of g touches but doesn't cross the x-axis at negative one. The zero x equals three has a multiplicity of one, which is odd, and tells us that the graph of g crosses the x-axis at three. Knowing this, we can eliminate graph E because it doesn't feature these characteristics. Additionally, we notice that graph B meets all of these qualities. So to summarize, graph A corresponds to our first function, f of x equals x to the fourth minus three x cubed, and graph B corresponds to our second function, g of x equals the quantity x plus one squared times the quantity x minus three.